and that is Mike Tyson making, to, making Tyrell Biggs wait, and both fighters making the crowd wait, and they're starting to get the first glimpse now of Mike Tyson, and Tyson, we understand, is going to run into the ring. And here comes Mike Tyson now, and as usual, he is all business, draped in the three belts that he now owns. As Mills Lane, the, the referee from Nevada says, Mike Tyson surely looks like he's saying, let's get it on. He was telling us the other day that there's an expression on the streets where he was raised that say, you gotta bring it to get it. And that's exactly his philosophy. It means that you can't win at the tables with your hands in your pockets. And you can't win in here unless you take some shots and take some risks. You know, he quotes Joe Frazier, actually, as he comes into the ring when people criticize his height, that he's too small, and he says Frazier believed he was big enough to get the job done, and that's all that counts. Mike Tyson, of course, 31-0, 27 knockouts. Until he won the title, actually, he hadn't fought any, anybody more impressive than Biggs has fought to this point. Since that time, Tyson has fought a better class of fighter than Biggs has. And the crowd, again, still very much into this. Five years difference, Mike Tyson is younger than Biggs, even though he's had 31 fights to Biggs 15. Yeah, Barry, and uh, Tyson, interestingly, came in a few pounds less than he has recently. Obviously, he wants to be able to keep up with the guy who's the boxer. And Biggs came in, bulked up by a few pounds. Obviously, he wants to be strong for Tyson. What it means is they're both ready. 15 rounds for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. A referee for this bout is Tony Orlando. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the white trunks and weighs 228 and three quarter pounds. He's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This Olympic gold medal champion has 15 consecutive victories, 10 by knockout. Introducing the number one challenger in the world, Tyrell B. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks. He weighs 216 pounds. From Catskill, New York, 27 of his 31 unblemished victories are by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated, undisputed, heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Gentlemen, you received your instructions prior to coming to the ring. Therefore, I expect a good, clean bout. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves with that to your corner. Good luck. Barry and Ray, I wouldn't be surprised if this fight lasted a minute or an hour. I feel exactly the same way. It's one of those fights you really don't know. I, I believe in the opinions of many of the people who feel that Tyrell Biggs can win the fight. I don't happen to be of that school, but you just don't know. Expect Tyson to jump right on Tyrell Biggs. Three questions that Mike Tyson really has to answer. Can he cope with a clever boxer? Can he survive a heavy puncher? And can he persevere when he's hurt? You notice right from the start, Tyson is applying the pressure, trying to slow his man down. I'm seeing more jazz from Mike Tyson than I've seen in the past. I see a lot of movement on the part of uh, Tyrell Biggs. Good lateral movement. Those hands should be up a little higher because, again, the hand speed of Mike Tyson is very good. You have said that Biggs has to go side to side to win the fight, Ray. Go side to side, give your man angles, throw the jab like he's doing now, not to let Tyson set up. Now, Tyson also said that he has found a pattern in Tyrell Biggs that he feints to the right before the punch actually is thrown. Well, whatever he does, the fact that Tyson has to set up to get that kind of leverage. See, a good snapping jab is very effective. Whether or not Biggs keeps this up is yet to be seen. 
It's not time to be pretty in here. It's just time to frustrate this man. And that's what they want from, from uh, Biggs. Good, consistent jab. And along the lines of patterns, Biggs feels that Tyson actually bobs in a pattern four times, and then he comes up with his head. See, wait, now I'm here. You saw how Tyson walks in, that crops his style to deliver a shot. He's trying for the head. Now we see him head, head hunting from Mike Tyson. He can't get into that. That was a good shot by Tyson. Get off the ropes, tie your man up. That's the way. Get him back into the center of the ring. Use the jab again. And come with that right hand. That was a quick little overhand right by Tyrell Biggs. Biggs now is talking to Tyson. Again, Barry, he's trying to frustrate him. But I don't like his hands down that low. I don't like Biggs' hands down so low. Because Tyson throws those looping right hands and left hooks. Keep him up, Mike. Keep him up. Body shot by Tyson. Theophilo Stevenson, and I admit it was five years ago, but he really bothered there me. There is the hook. Again, because his hands are down. He's moving right, but he keeps his hands down too low. Tyson has very quick hands for a big man. Stevenson beat Biggs by going to the body. Broke three ribs, as a matter of fact. A lot of water under the bridge since then. They're going to have to fix Tyson's equipment here in just a moment as it has come loose. Biggs is starting to become a stationary target, which is wrong. Right hand by Bad Tyson. Move. A little bit of blood inside the mouth of Tyrell Biggs. Biggs can fight a perfect fight, but he fought about as perfect a round as he could have hoped for to start this fight. There you see our punch stat, which tells you that Tyson is not effective with the jab, and of course, Tyrell Biggs is very impressive with it. Let the hook pull you around. Let it pull you around with two or four. Then stop. Hook it. Pull it out of it. Got your hands up. All right, check Punch that showed or confirmed that was a very good round using the left hand as well as he can. That is exactly what Biggs must do to stay in this fight. Can Tyson neutralize the jab? You see, Biggs is doing great the first two minutes of the first round, keeping that jab consistent, moving lateral, giving angles, but then he the last maybe 45 seconds of the round, Barry, he stopped. He came stationary to target the hands again, which I think is uh, a, a major mistake because of Tyson's hand speed. And Tyson throws his punch. He loops his right hand. He loops his hook. And uh, Biggs could be asked for a few problems. And the thing that strikes me, actually, is Biggs did have a round and did fight according to his fight plan, but he still took some strong shots from Tyson. You see, now Biggs again, Barry, is starting to stand there and exchange toe-to-toe, -to -toe, like I said earlier. You can't do that. Tyson's punches come so fast with so much velocity behind him. It's devastating. Biggs has shown a tendency, actually, throughout his career, and especially later in his career, most recently, to get in there occasionally and want to slug it out when he's been stunned. And that could be suicide. And the way that Biggs is moving to his right, that's wrong because of the hook of Mike Tyson. He'll run right to the left hook. Uh, two hands, two hands, punch out. Let him go, let him go. Let him go in here, Charlie, let him go, come on. Come on, let him go. I right, break, get that. What I was expecting on, from Biggs, and in fact, they, they oh, told oh, me that right. he's been prepared, on, working this in the gym, I the break, was the uppercut, the jab, break. to go through go. Tyson's defense. I have not seen that yet. 
And the game plan was for give Biggs rather to move to his left. Now he's been moving to his right, and as you said, he's been getting himself a little trouble when he does so. Tyson's dripping some tremendous shots to the body, and uh, that's going to help bring those hands down even lower. Remember, Stevenson broke three ribs of Tyrell Biggs. I'm looking for a left hook, Barry. I really am because of the, look at the right hand of uh, Tyrell Biggs. That's the uppercut, but you gotta come back with the right hand. The uppercut raises the chin of a guy who crouches in, and the right hand does most damage. There was a big right hand, best punch of the fight. That was the left hook, Barry. That was the left hook I was talking about. Now, if Biggs should make it back to his corner, I'm sure Georgie Biggs will say, keep those hands high. Right, left, I'll get it right. <laughs> right, left, left. <laughs> But the fact of the matter is, the right hand is down a big, the left hook has been scoring. And it rocked big. As Michael Tyson said before this fight, everybody has a plan until they're hit. And here is Tyson's most effective punch. Biggs has been on his uh, flat footed more in this round than he was in the first round. Got nailed with the left hook. He has shown in the past that he takes a good punch. You don't want to take too many from Tyson. But now look, come on. You gotta slow down. Second round. Second round. Second round. Second round. So Kevin Rooney wants Mike Tyson to jab a little bit more. And Big starts the third round backing up a little bit. Good stiff jab by Mike Tyson. Tyson will constantly apply pressure to Biggs. Keep working his body and working the jab like Kevin Rooney stated. People don't realize this. I learned this from Andrew Dundee. It's not a matter how long your jab is. The fact that you have a jab, use it. That offsets someone else's jab. Now the left hook. The hook's going to land all night, Barry, because his right hand is down. Let me show you what Tyson does when he delivers that left hook. He takes one, two steps in, dips, and, and puts his whole body, all his weight behind the punch. A lot of leverage. One, two. You see it. Steps in. So you have to time it. You have to time this movement. One, two. Again, same thing. One, two. And he throws it. That was a little short left hand that did get in. Shot with the left hand. And, and now the cut over the left eye, and it's pretty bad. It's the same eye, the same cut. And another big left hand, and Biggs is hurt. Now he gets out of there. A lot of blood from the left eye of Tyrell Biggs. That's the same thing they probably happened with uh, oh, oh, oh. David Bates. They had toe to toe. It's a terrible mistake. Something you pointed out before the fight. And now it's Tyson just hammering him. That's a nasty cut. It's, it's, the blood is seeping to the eye. This will require a lot of work in the corner of Tyrell Biggs to stop that bleeding. The cut is right above the eye. It's exactly in the same place as the last one. Biggs, I don't know what happened. All that gym work has gone down the drain because he's not boxing, he's not using his tools. He's trying to outmuscle Mike Tyson, which is not his fight plan. And there is a huge left hand. They may stop it. That's a nasty cut. And 
don't think I won't tell you what a finisher Mike Tyson is. The pressure, the relentless pressure of Tyson takes its toll. That's a big round. There you see that cut against Ty and that he absorbed against Tyrell against David Bay, and here it is right now being worked on. That was a 32 stitch gash that he suffered from Bay. Now let's see if we can catch it as it happens. That's the punch that apparently sliced Bay open. Excuse me, Tyrell Biggs open. It's the same right hand, Larry, that was thrown by David Bay. Let's remember that Biggs has fought his best when he's been in trouble. But I think it's fair to say that he's not in there against David Bay tonight. Right hand body shot and the left hand behind it by Tyson. Mike Tyson is not just loaded up in one punch. He's trying to put his punches together. He's trying to put together combinations. A mistake he made with Tony Tucker. Tyson Ray, to me, seems to be a little bit more patient tonight. Yes, in fact, he is a little more composed, uh, picking his shots. But again, I don't, know, I don't know why they don't pick it up in Big's corner, the way Tyson steps in and leaves his chin so vulnerable. The way I see it now, Mike Tyson has made big fight his fight. So far, the cut has not been any worse. And remember, it was a pretty good job done by Ace Parada, his cut man, in the fight with David Bay. But again, Tyson just putting all the pressure on him, having it his way. Didn't seem like Mike was a good short uppercut by uh, Mike Tyson. A little more by the movement from uh, Tyrell Biggs now. Start throw some uppercuts. He took a big left hand there. And another. The cut is reopened again. How does it happen, Ray, that a fighter like Biggs, in this case tonight, will go into a fight with a game plan, and almost from the opening bell, he'll just let that game plan go away? It's all concentration. you got to stick to something that's working for you. And what I see in Tyson, Tyson sticks to his game plan. He works the body with that right hand. He drills a hard right hand to the body and comes up with a good left hook. But Biggs is doing almost everything exactly the opposite of what he said he was going to do. Huge left hand there by Tyson. And a combination by Tyson, a left and a right behind him. Getting to be a mismatch. Right now, Tyson looks like he's rolling in like the tide from the Atlantic Ocean a few steps from Convention Hall. You had it good, Doc. Don't worry. We're going to be all right. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. The brain doctor is taking a look. I got it. All set. But the cut appears no worse than it did earlier. Put your head back. Go back. Go all the way back. And you, you're laying back and taking it easy. You can't take it easy with this guy. You gotta keep the pressure on this guy. You gotta move your hand. So all you gotta do is throw the combination. You gotta put two, three, four punches together. Understand me? You understand what I'm saying? He won't 
gonna be there. He's, he's gonna be there. He's yeah. not gonna be yeah. there. One more round. Let's go. And you will not dodge. You're not nothing. One more round. He's not there, baby. Come on, check it out. So we start the fifth round, and Tyson is right on his man. Kevin Rudy exhorting him to throw two and three punch combinations. It's a little swelling under the right eye of Tyrell Biggs as well right now. Tyrell's going to recognize himself when he wakes up tomorrow morning. I don't know what that was a second ago by Tyrell Biggs. This is somewhat disappointing for Biggs' corner because he has more talent than what he's showing tonight. The left hooks have been consistent and very, very accurate with Mike Tyson. But they're there for a good reason, right? Well, Tyson, because uh, look what you have in front of you. Uh, the fact that <laughs> Biggs is not doing what he what he worked on. He just forgot about his game plan. Totally abandoned it. Mike Tyson, he's doing what he does best. Worked the body, worked the head. Simple fact is, and I don't think you have to be a boxing expert, Tyrell Biggs is dropping his right hand, and he's just leaving himself completely open for the left hook. Well, I think this is a good education for the public because the fans at home, because they're seeing what should not be done against a fighter like a Mike Tyson or any boxer or puncher, rather, in particular. You have to be consistent. Keep those hands high. And again, that cut over the left eye has opened up. There is a swelling under the right eye that has a lot of blood right below the surface of the skin also. What Biggs has to do, he has to work something out, which is actually the left jab to break that rhythm and stop the momentum of Mike Tyson. He, can, he continues, Barry, to allow Mike to dominate. Yeah, again, bleeding from the mouth, as he has been since the first round. Not a pretty sight. He subjects him, himself, Biggs does, to standing toe-to-toe -to -toe and being a, actually a punching bag. This way, this probably see uh, more knots and bruises because Tyson is hard. Good body shot by Mike Tyson. And remember, the doctor was in Tyrell Biggs' corner and looked long and hard at that cut in the last round, and you're going to see him again. Tyson hit on a break that time. I'm telling the doctor, 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 the that cut looks even uglier. I'm Friday, sure the doctor look at it. Bloody Friday. He's not doing enough. He's not doing enough. You know what I'm saying? He's better than on the guy's back. Yeah. Now look, don't get in to this chick. No, you can't, can't punch him. There's nothing out there. Now listen. No. No. All right, but look. Hey. No, you got to break clean, man. Come on, come on in. in. And keep your hands up when the guys. Don't touch the guy. Now look. Keep your head. Uh, are you all right? Uh, uh, let me know. Uh, uh, unofficial official. How do you score the fight? Well, Larry, I've got a 49-46 Mike Tyson, four to round, four to one in rounds. Uh, based on the four points that we score, it's very simple to score. Mike Tyson's just been the effective aggressor, the harder hitter, and uh, he's dominating at this point. This guy's tired. Check it out. Okay. The other pair? Come on, this guy's hurt. Lou Dube is doing everything possible to inspire Biggs. He, he said as he left the oh, ring, you heard him, you heard him. <laughs> that is wishful thinking. And Biggs holding on a great deal now. There was a right hand by Tyson. And another. Biggs, you have to say, he, he, he takes a good shot, but it, uh, this was not necessary. I mean, I, I figured that Biggs would use 
that height, that reach, and his ring generalship to uh, make this fight a little easier for him. Instead, he abandoned his uh, Mike, tactics, the strategy he worked on in the gym, and select to fight Mike Tyson's fight. I, I love those body shots, though. They weaken the fighter, it takes away his legs, so you won't see that much movement from Tyrell Biggs. And what Mike wants him to be is a stationary target. Tyson has fought an excellent fight so far. I, you know, I, I admit that Biggs has let him fight an excellent fight, but Tyson's been very sharp. Well, I like Tyson because now he's putting his combinations together. He's not loading up anymore. And he's also showing a lot more patience. He was a guy who would just get in there and go for the quick kill and try to do it, generally speaking, with one punch. You know what's happening here? Actually, Biggs is just wearing down slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. It's like chopping a tree down. It's the same principle. He's wearing, Mike Tyson's wearing his man down. And the way you can tell this, Burr, is the fact that you notice this very, very uh, seldom does uh, Biggs retaliate. Very seldom you see Biggs come back with a combination of his own. Break, no punch, you let him out. Let him out, Joe. These two, of course, go back a long way, all the way back to amateur days. Now the left hand, and there's a great shot. Biggs is in trouble. Yeah. The way it looks now, uh, Biggs like a defeated warrior now. He's been pounded on for five rounds, and he's slowly but surely wearing down. His legs will look steady. Tyson's getting stronger, and Biggs is just holding on. Well, that made the betters happy, if nothing else, because Tyrell Biggs has lasted six rounds. They say that Tyson is predictable, but uh, so is a hurricane. What can you do about it? Well, here's something that hasn't been predictable the last couple of weeks because of the football strike, but inside the NFL will now be back because the strike has been, and I'll put it in quotes, settled. Your hosts, Len Dawson and Nick Bonacani. It's right here on HBO Thursdays at 11. More seven, thank you, Dan. More seven, more seven. That six is beautiful. Let's see, six, five, one. Six, five, two, one. Get to the side. Play with this guy now. You understand? Yeah. This guy's got nothing. Give him the face. Like you did before. Give him the face. Give him the face. Step to the side. Five. You, you're taking the best of these guys. So what the hell's wrong with your car? Back. Come on, this guy's gone. Now listen Come to Come on, you're better fighting him. Fire from your chin, no. The guy can't fight inside. So if you, if you got no legs, fight him inside. If you got Tony, Tony. Those numbers you heard were a fight combination. Customato, the mentor of Mike Tyson, used to put numbers on the different fight combinations, and uh, Kevin Rooney is Tyson's disciple. I heard something interesting in Big's corner. Is it Big told him, his trainer said, if your legs are gone, stand and fight him. Stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and fight him. So apparently the legs of Tyra Biggs are shot because you don't see movement. He hasn't had movement actually for the past two or three rounds. And just to further that point, in the last round, our punch that figures, Tyrell Biggs threw 15 punches, Ray. Again, like I said earlier, up there, he's, he's just wearing down. You gotta, you can appreciate, especially from ringside, those body attacks by Mike Tyson. I mean, he gets his whole body, a lot of leverage. I am surprised that I have not seen that many uppercuts from Tyrell Biggs. Now that was his game plan. I mean, that was something he said he had to do. I break, no punches. Get that two. Let him go, Charlie. Let him go. Get back. Good. A cut, incidentally, at least for the last couple of rounds, has not shown any more blood. It appears to me that Biggs is trying to time Tyson with the counter right. I know when Tyson comes in, Biggs tries to stand his ground and throw a right hand. 
So now that tells me that Biggs is pretty much falling to the same trap as Mike Tyson, trying for one punch. And he's never, there's the right hand that just caught Biggs off balance. Biggs is covering up a lot of times unnecessarily and just trying to protect himself. Biggs, of course, has never been known as a guy who could put a man away with one punch. He dropped Snipes with a good right hand. But he didn't put him away. The elbow there from uh, Tyson. Uh, Kevin Rooney was telling Tyson, get a, little, a couple of head fights. Oh, that's that there. was a tremendous left hand. This, this is it. He is gone right now. He has no legs at all. And 10 seconds to go in a round. There's a left hand. He's down again. It's over. It's all over. And it wasn't even close. And what we've seen has happened so often in which a fighter after a few rounds starts to hang on to Tyson that we have to say it's Tyson's credit. He's the one who makes it happen. He makes it happen with his pressure, and no matter what an opponent's plan is, that plan disintegrates like a broken piece of crockery when it's faced with that kind of pressure. There's no way to practice for that. I pointed out in the past, it's like trying to, how do you practice to hit Nolan Ryan's fastball or Boris Becker's serve? Where do you, where do you get the practice for that? You don't. <laughs> it's that simple. Let's take a look at the first knockdown. It was a left hand and a big one, and I feel like I'm being redundant with that, but he hit him with many big left hands, Ray. Well, look at look at the right hand of uh, Tyrell Biggs. It's down, and the left hook has been landing from round one. But the first the first minute or two of round one, Biggs is doing his job, boxing. Now he becomes a stationary target. That toe-to-toe -to -toe tactics proved wrong against David Bay, which he subsequently was cut. And now the same thing happens. So all we had was actually a replay of what took place. Here, Mike Tyson just wears his man down with beautiful short left hook. It was really on more his legs than anything else. He was just kind of off balance, had his legs together, just never really got it together. Here is the final knockdown now. No, I, I think it's the power and the fact that Mike Tyson actually wore his man down. One more look at the end for Tyrell Biggs. And Brad, let me say this for you and Larry. There is a way to stop a guy coming in, and it's with a jab. You've got to work on jabs, angles, and combinations. Yeah, and Ray, he did it for one round. That was it. But that was his fault, Brad. He forgot. He just gave up. We just abandoned the tactics that would have been effective. Now, that's what I mean. As a matter of fact, and, and I don't mean to just blow smoke at you because you did it, but you were the only person I've ever seen start with a fight plan and stay with a fight plan and what, just not get away from it. Well, that's what is required against a guy with the kind of heart, determination, power of Mike Tyson. You've got to be consistent. Let's get the official decision now from Michael Buffer. Mike? Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes, 59 seconds of the seventh round. The winner, still the undefeated, undisputed, heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson! Right now, Larry Merchant trying to make his way over to the champion, uh, and I believe he is. Let's go to Larry right now with Mike Tyson. Larry? And I'm with Mike Tyson, who first administered a paint job and then sort of wrecked the whole house. Mike, he looked very impressive in the first round, looking like Ali, the way he moved and jabbed. What were your thoughts at that point, and then how did you attack him to stop that? Well. In my mind, I knew this was 15 rounds, and I was prepared to put the pressure on constantly for 15 rounds. You know, I was having, I was having a great time in there. I felt good. I was in the best condition of my life, and I did what I was supposed to do. Well, tell me, what, what did you think in that first round when he was moving, trying to do an Ali no, with his left? I knew when I, when I came to this fight, I was the best fighter in the world, and I'm a man alive that can beat me. What broke him down? Was it just constantly the Constantly body punches. When I was, I was hitting him with body punches, and I heard him, actually, he was crying in there. 
making woman gestures like, oh, 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 I can't how, yeah. find him, but I knew that he was breaking down soon. You're saying that Biggs was crying when yes. you hit him? Yes. When, when did that happen? And perhaps the fourth round on. So that you knew you had him by that Absolutely, time? Absolutely, but I knew he was, he was toughing it, taking those punches. Was this your most satisfying fight in the sense of the way you went about it patiently and, and business-like, not getting excited, not trying to take him out with one punch? Well, I, I was very calm, and I, was, and I was thinking about Roberto Duran, how he used to cut down the runners and just wear them down, and I had that frame of mind when I was in the ring. All right, Mike, let's take a look at the first knockdown, and would you describe what was happening? Well, I was in there looking for the punch, boom, and I knew it would come, because when he threw a punch, his hand opened a little, and I thought I could slip a punch right in there. Were you trying to work on his cut early on because he was pretty bloody? No, I wasn't even thinking about the cut. I was just hitting to the body, softening him up. So that from then on, you really feel that it was inevitable after the first few Absolutely. rounds? Absolutely. All right, Mike, we hear now that you're going to fight Larry Holmes next. Why Larry Holmes? Well, I don't have any faith on the matter. I was just a fighter, and I'll defend my title against any man in the world. If I was you, I'd talk to Jim Jacobs about that. Do you want to fight Larry Holmes? I'll fight any man in the world, because I believe there's no one in this planet that can beat me. Okay, then let me ask Jimmy Jacobs, the co-manager of Mike, why do you want to fight Larry Holmes next? Well, the reason is that be uh, I would say that 90% of the world thought that Larry Holmes beat Michael Spinks the last time they fought. In fact, Larry, of 46 newspaper men polled after the fight, 42 men of the 46 voted for Larry Holmes in the last fight with Michael Spinks. Larry is sitting at home feeling that he's the champion, and that's the reason we're going to fight him. But he did lose his last two fights. He hasn't fought in a good long while. It's A lot of people are saying, what is this, some kind of an antique show? Or is this in the best or worst traditions of boxing, fighting these kinds of fights? I don't think it's either in the worst or best traditions of boxing. Boxing history is replete with 27 heavyweight champions attempting to regain the title. However, this the champion we're talking about, Larry Holmes, uh, was defeated by a split decision in his last fight against Michael Spinks, where everyone, even you, Larry, everyone, including you, thought that Larry Holmes won the fight. Okay, then, then, then what about Michael Spinks? Uh, that is the most attractive fight out there, according to everyone, and you can jump in here, too, Bill, Bill Caton. What about Michael Spinks, and, and why aren't you going to take him on next or right after next or whenever? Whenever we're ready to, we make our plans for that. We haven't made our plans to take on Michael Spinks because a fight with Michael Spinks, which is a pay-per-view, closed-circuit fight, takes a minimum of five months during which time Mike would not fight. Mike wants to fight more frequently. So you're saying now you will fight Michael Spinks eventually? I would say this, that Michael Spinks is definitely in our future. Definitely in our future, but not in our immediate future. Let me put it this way. If you, uh, you have been saying that you have a lot of fights planned, that you have told various people you're going to fight their man, what, what about going in there and saying, um, we'll fight you winner take all, or winner take almost all. We'll give a million dollars to the loser and 20 million to the winner. Would you fight Spinks yes. under those circumstances? Under the circumstances, if he would take a million, on that, on that yes. Deal, yes. Or, yes. Or you take a yes. million. Yes, yes. yes. We, would, we would fight Michael Spinks on the basis that the loser takes a million and the winner take the rest. Yes, we would do that. That's you one way of making the deal. Yeah, that would be one way of making the deal quick. <laughs> you sound pretty confident. <laughs> And let's see what Barry and Ray think about that one.